and was full of greed right here. This man was greedy. The more he could get, the more he wanted. You know why? Because really, the fruits in that barn could never truly satisfy him. Oh, the world would have thought he was a success. But God said, it, God called him a fool, didn't he? You see, what Jesus said in verse 34 right there in Luke 12, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let me tell you, if your treasure's in the things of God, your heart is going to be there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you get ashamed when somebody starts mentioning Jesus, let me tell you, your heart's not right. When they start mentioning Jesus, I start getting a little goosebumps, don't you? When they start talking about the Holy Ghost, my feet will get start moving a little bit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, but people are tonight. People don't want to hear about it. Why? Because they're concerned about building barns. Let me tell you, the things of this world's never going to satisfy you. Why do you think there's fads that go around? Amen. They're looking at these fads to satisfy them. And a fad will never satisfy you. People run to this, they'll run to that looking for satisfaction. And the only true satisfaction can only come through the name of Jesus tonight. Oh, people's hearts are so fixed right here on this earth. Their hearts fixed to things on this earth. Let me tell you, my heart's ready up there. When I hear people say, well, I hope the rapture ain't for a few more years. Yeah, I know where your heart's at really quick. Because I want it right now. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm saying? I hope the Lord don't come before I get this or that done. Well, you need to get your heart out of Egypt and get your heart into the promised land tonight and get your heart upon the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, people's got to, well, we don't want to go right now. I want to go right now. The old saying, nobody wants to die, but everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Let me tell you, I'm about ready to say something that may make you crazy. I'm ready to go either way. People's heart's not where it needs to be. They're earthly minded. And what's this earth really produced? Heartache, pain, sickness, misery. You know, the devil promises you the world, don't he? He'll give you a little bit of pleasure, but he don't tell you the heartache, the pain, the sickness, the misery that's on this world. Let me tell you, I'm looking forward to a place called heaven where there ain't no more sickness and heartaches. There ain't no more cancer, dementia. There ain't no more kidney disease. There ain't no more gout. There ain't no more whatever disease there is. But I'm telling you tonight, we've got to get our hearts fixed to say, Lord Jesus, come quickly. We've got to lay our treasure up in heaven. Let me tell you tonight, I've got a house waiting on me far greater than any house on this earth. I've got a mansion far greater than the Biltmore House. If you don't know what the Biltmore House is, in Asheville, North Carolina, it is an old millions of millions of dollar mansion. You pay four, 60 bucks to go in to look at an old house. And people do it left and right. I'm telling you, it's grand. It's big. But I've got something far greater than that waiting on me on the other side. It wasn't prepared by man's hands. It was prepared by the Lamb of God. And Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Didn't you know that? He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. So I go to prepare a place for you. I believe when that mansion's ready, he's going to come for us. How many know you got a mansion regretting on you? How many know you got a treasure far greater than anything this world can ever give tonight? People are so earthly minded. Oh, I like these... Here's how you know they're earthly minded. Well, when I get time. When I get time, I'll get to the house of God. When I get time, I'll begin to hunger for him. You're walking on dangerous ground. You ain't promised an under second. Been meaning to. But I just get caught up. I've been meaning to get that closer walk with God. 
I've been meaning to show up. One day you've been meaning to, you're going to come and find out the church is gone. Amen. Maybe one day, just not now. Oh, let me sow my wild oats. You hear that? I've heard them say that. Let, them, let me serve my wild oats. Well, let me tell you, young person. Sin ain't a respecter of any. If it'll kill the old one as good as it will the young one. Your wild oats can be deadly. You ain't promised another day. It don't matter the age you are. You ain't promised another day on this earth, but you are promised another day in eternity somewhere. Oh, people's got that. Some would just flat out tell you never. I like to call all of them dead men walking. What are you talking about? I'm saying there's plenty of dead men walking. What's a dead man walking? They're breathing, ain't they? They're talking, ain't they? They're walking, ain't they? But they're still dead men. Why? Because you never get alive until you get in Christ Jesus. And as long as you're lost, you're dead. Oh, we got all these things that get in the way. They're busy and concerned with everything else. Simply, they're living the foolish life just like this man here in Luke read, did. Everything else. Let me build my bigger barns. Let me build, bestow it with fruits. And like I told you, if anybody's going to be, be blessed, I pray that God's people are blessed. Because if God's people are blessed, let me tell you, the gospel can go into the world. Anybody know what I'm talking about? What are you saying? I'm saying people are living foolishly. They're living for this world. They're living for the material things. They're living for just this moment of time. And this moment's going to pass quickly. Lord, I was thinking today, where has 2016 gone? It seems like January just started and here we are. In this July, in this hot weather, that I'm ready for the hot weather to be gone. And I'm ready for 20 below and 5 feet of snow. I know I'll probably get stoned on that. <laughs> but I'm ready. But this year's flew by. And I seen where somebody had posted on Facebook where some of the stores has already got Christmas stuff being put out. Yeah. Before we know it, it will be here. Think about how quick your life is going now. And understand, it's just for a moment. What we are here on this earth for is to make one decision. And the greatest decision you'll ever make is what will you do with Jesus Christ. And it's the one that has consequences or rewards attached to it. If you accept him, you've got a great reward. But if you reject him, there's a consequence to rejecting him. But people don't realize how quick it is. They're going around making plans and really have no idea what's going on. They're going about saying, next year, this time, we're going to get in in a few minutes. But let me tell you, they have no idea what's coming forth before the night ends, more or less, next week or next year. You see, this foolish man was living on the edge of eternity and he didn't even realize it. What are you saying? I'm saying he was building these things, but he was close to eternity. What good's it going to do to build the big barns? Verse 20 says, But God said to him, You fool, this night... Your soul shall be required of you. Then who shall those things be which you provided? God right here. The world. Now let's see what this world would have considered this man. They would have considered him a great success. He would have been in magazines. He would have been on TV programs being interviewed for the things that he done. There would have been people in the world that says, If you want to be like somebody, you need to emulate this man. Build like this man. Yet God called this man a fool. Did you hear me? Why? 
because he left God out. I hear some of these millionaires denouncing God. They don't believe in God. Anybody ever heard of Stephen Hawkins? Must be a smart man, but he denies God. He's a fool. Got all the wisdom of the world. He's confined into a wheelchair, but don't want to believe in God. It's foolishness. Some of these other guys that's got the money think, let me tell you, look at Hollywood. Look what it promotes. They got fame and fortune, but many of them out there, the majority deny the God of the Bible. A fool. Why are they a fool? Because all they built, everything they laid up, just like this rich man, just like this man that built these barns, won't do them a bit of good right now. You see, he built it. Oh, I can imagine. It was the finest of the finest. And boy, I believe it was packed. <laughs> you know, he had that barn filled. Boy, if you would have looked at it, he would have had enough to go around for years. But what good's it going to do you if you lose your soul? That's what God was saying right there. What good's all that going to do you if you lose out with him? You see, he spent his life building treasures upon this earth. And all of a sudden, in just a moment's time, that didn't mean a hill of beans. Because now he had neglected all the years that he had building these barns. And storing it up, he neglected the most important aspect of his life, his soul. Anybody know what I'm talking about? To neglect the soul is foolishness. What did Jesus say in Matthew 16 and 26? For what is a man profited if, if he should, shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man given an exchange for his soul. Now think about this. All the barns in the world filled up did not do him good right now. No matter what he accumulated in this world, it did not carry any weight in heaven. Did you hear me? And today, people neglect the soul like it's something like that. They're playing Russian roulette with it. Eventually, they keep playing long enough, they're going to pull that trigger and the bullet's going to be in there. People do not realize the, you can't take anything you accumulate. I will not take the shirt off my back into eternity. He couldn't take none of these fruits with him. What was he thinking when he was gasping that last bit of air? Can I tell you something tonight? This may not be pleasant, but if the Lord tarries, let me just give you something. A hundred years from now, I believe he's coming before that. I just want to use this as a good example. A hundred years from now, if he does tarry, which I don't believe he will, let me tell you, every one of us will be rolled up this aisle. We'll take that grass, last grasp of air. And if our barns be full, what good's it going to do? If everything's, if we gain the world and we lose the soul, what good's it going to do? What happens if you go out here tonight and you reject Jesus Christ and you lose your soul? People are living foolishly. They're not, they ain't got a hunger for God like they once did. People don't have a desire. Why don't they have a desire? Because they're neglecting the soul and they're feeding the flesh. It's time to start feeding on God because the soul is the most important thing you'll ever have. If you lose it, you've lost out. What did James say in verse 4, 13 through 15? Go 
to now to say today or tomorrow we will go into such